for one of the few times in the Greg Popovich era, the Spurs felt the kind of turbulence that other teams endure. The proud franchise dealt with the quiet yet destructive storm caused by Leonard, who played only nine games and missed the playoffs because of strangely persistent quad injury that confused and annoyed coaches, players and Spurs fans. A wedge of distrust was formed between Leonard, an NBA Finals hero and considered by many to be the NBA's best two-way player, and a team that prided itself on stability, professionalism and good relationships with its stars. But, the Spurs being the Spurs, they found a way to prosper anyway. Thanks to the heavy lifting by all-star LaMarcus Aldridge and the disciplined play of San Antonio's veterans. Their playoff exit was quick, and observers wondered how long it would take for the transitioning Spurs to enjoy the view from the top again. The breakup between Leonard and the Spurs was painful, confusing, somewhat regretful, and, ultimately necessary. The relationship between Leonard and the Spurs reached the predictable bitter ending. There's nothing pretty about an in-their-prime star being traded by the only team he's ever known, especially when it involves a franchise like the Spurs. Leonard was projected as the team's next star after David Robinson and Tim Duncan, but sometimes the basketball gods laugh at the best laid plans. Leonard is now in Toronto, putting an end to one of the strangest sagas in recent memory. What, exactly, happened between Leonard and the Spurs may never be known, because Popovich isn't telling, and Leonard doesn't talk. It makes no difference, though, as the Spurs have moved on minus their former star player. Replacing Leonard is Darazin, who wasn't exactly thrilled to leave Toronto, which is no disrespect to the Spurs. Darazin was the opposite of Leonard someone who wanted to spend his basketball life with the team that drafted him. Darazin is neither the defender nor the clutch playoff scorer Leonard is. However, Darazin is a legit scorer with a reliable mid-range game and an improving three-point shot. He must develop a chemistry with the big man, Aldridge, after sharing a solid vibe with all-star guard Kyle Lowry in Toronto. The Spurs also had to surrender Green in the trade, who is a solid defender and a career 39. 5% three-point shooter. Green's presence and ability to stretch the floor made life easier for Aldridge, who may not enjoy the same advantage with Darazand. Poltel, a mobile seven-footer, also came over in the Leonard trade. The reliable reserve big man improved his offensive game in 2017-18 and was a key part of Toronto's 59-win season. The Spurs system and playing alongside veteran Pau Gasol might help Poltel develop further if he doesn't fall into the I'm just here to set picks mindset that plagues some young bigs. Leonard might not receive the warmest reception when he makes his return to San Antonio this season. Yet it's guaranteed Parker will get nothing short of a standing ovation and tearful video tribute. He reached the end of the line after 17 mostly glorious years in San Antonio because of declining skills and a desire by the Spurs to groom their young point guards instead. So Parker signed with the Charlotte Hornets, coached by ex-Spurs assistant James Borrego, believing he can still be a solid contributor despite being an old 36. The other heart-wrenching departure was caused by the retirement of Ginobili, who called it quits and, unlike Parker, spent his entire 16-year career with the Spurs. This means for the first time since the pre-Robinson days, the Spurs won't have a homegrown star on the roster. 
the Spurs decided not to match the reported four-year, $37 million offer the Memphis Grizzlies gave Anderson, a restricted free agent. Anderson was a student of the Spurs player development program and was a fixture in the rotation. His fundamental style seemed perfect for the Spurs, yet clearly, slow-mo lacked the speed and quickness needed at small forward to become more than just a role player. The Spurs have enjoyed success with mid to late first round picks and, at number 18, took Walker IV. He's a lively guard who will make the NBA's all hair style team before he plays a minute. The six foot four guard will become another pet project for the Spurs development program in hopes that he and Murray will someday become the team's backcourt of the future. In the meantime, the Spurs signed Bellinelli for a second tour in San Antonio. Bellinelli is a trusted three-point shooter, 37. 7% for his career, who should fill some of the void left behind by Green.it was the busiest offseason in recent memory for the Spurs, an organization that rarely makes big trades and, with the exception of Aldridge, almost never signs big-name free agents. That's not to suggest the Spurs are suddenly changing their approach. They'll continue to grow organically, as evidenced by Murray, Bryn Forbes, who was given an extension, and now, Walker IV. But this was a summer that shook the franchise and tested the limits of Popovich, who will turn 70 this season and may take a long look at his own future in San Antonio.